they've got these numbered doors you're supposed to get in based on where you're going. We're going to Rugby, the least used Amtrak station in North Dakota, which will be a separate video. Yeah, it's confusing. The next day. Big Sky is right. We're not in Montana. We're leaving Devil's Lake, and that means the next stop is Rugby. Wait, really? That's the observation car, and this is where we are now. Wow, long walk. We've got rug and rug. One. This is looking like civilization. I think we're getting really close. We're slowing down. No one's making any announcements. Is there a conductor down here? All right, we're in the right place. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it's called Miles in Transit. Miles in Transit. Are you getting off in rugby too? No. Oh, okay. Oh, so there's, there's four offs at the station. Yeah, yeah. All right. Four offs. Okay. Four offs. Nice. Well, we're two of them, right? Oh, thank you. Okay. Have a good day, guys. Thank you so much. You too. Thank you. Yep. Ooh, wow. Four offs. And one on. One on. That's a busy that's day. Not bad. Rugby, yeah. Canada. To one of those sense of dread. This is the sense of dread ones. <laughs> yeah. I don't think it's too bad. All right, so let's see. We got bricks that are all labeled Minnesota Ceramic Company. Oh wow, how old That's is that? This is rugby's claim to fame that the geographical center of North America. I'm not quite sure how they measured that. I'm not quite sure how <laughs> geometrically, like a very irregular shape like North America, could be considered to have an exact center. Oh, no. So the station purports to only be open 5:30 a.m. to 8:30 a.m. and then 8:30 p.m. to 11:30 p.m. Oh. Arr, well, this one's locked, so we'll do the U door. Oh, history, history. Oh, yeah, this is well, 1907 and. 1907, wow. The Great Northern Depot. It's a nice depot. No bicycles allowed. Oh, wait, this is really nice. This is really nice. They have all these different Amtrak services up here. We've yeah. got all these benches, which are admittedly hostile, but. They're still wooden. Uh, it's a very nice inside space. An actually accurate clock. We were like four That's hours and something minutes late. A rotary phone. Are you kidding me? Okay, wait, wait, wait. This is this is so good. Uh, it's, actually, it's actually out of service and it's also like a push button phone that kind of has like a rotary looking oh, design, okay. but wow. Still a good so, aesthetic. Still a piece of equipment. Look at this, it's like Should a little free library. library. Baldwin Locomotive Works, Philadelphia, USA, October 1923. Maximum speed of this engine, 75 miles an hour. James J. Hill, the Empire Builder. Jackson, 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 toy train, toy train. Wait, oh, it doesn't have any. trains, though. There are no trains to play on. But you could, like, change the layout if you so wish. Wait, my buffer. The Amtrak Visa with Smart Track Rewards. How old are these ads? This is not entirely an unpleasant place to be waiting. I. You have no idea, Jackson. I really like this. <laughs> this is, <not laughs> this is really nice. It's this remote. I was not expecting it to be this nice. Uh, Women's room, waste basket. <gasps> Are you kidding me? Brochures? Whoa. Anything this is like. A guide to North Dakota. Oh my gosh. An official highway map of North Dakota. Whoa. Hella That's a souvenir. Yeah, <laughs> More history. Look at all these. There's a brochure. This is genuinely like building. really cool history. I know. This is awesome. Here's the schedule. So we were supposed to be here at. Well, actually, they've changed the schedule since we were supposed to arrive at 7.53 a.m. Yeah, it's 6.56. I think mean, they changed it recently, but still, it's not, yeah. not quite accurate. How's the water fountain? I'll take one for the team. All right, all right. All right. It's an LK. That's a, that's a classic brand of water fountain. Okay. Better than Amtrak water. Is this also a working water fountain? No. Oh, here's the Amtrak map. Uh, How so complicated is this? Uh, this this was out of service during Katrina. This has um, via rail to Gaspe, which Gaspe. That, they got rid of that at some point. I don't know when. Oh, and this still has the Victoria train, like the Vancouver Island train. Cool. So it's definitely not up to date. 2003, August 2003. And here's the men's room. We gotta do a bathroom review. Yeah. Oh, whoa, this is really nice. Wow. Great bathroom. This ticket office probably hasn't been used in a very long time. I never would have imagined in a million years that there would have been a train station that's open to the public but not staffed. Like, they could never pull this off in Philadelphia, you know? People would yeah. be like, up to all sorts of shenanigans in here. But in North Dakota, you can just have this completely nice building, you know, the lights on, the air conditioning on. There is so much history here. Like, yeah. we've got this whole other display, including this really nice plaque. Yeah. Rugby and its neighbors say thank you for your years of dedicated service from 1991. Thank you, Clint. 1994. Oops. Oh, this is interesting. On August 31st, 1970, the station of Pleasant Lake, North Dakota 
was dualized with Rugby North Dakota, and they were served by one ticket agent. Is there still a Pleasant Lake? I don't think so. I don't think so, yeah. Well, it's just amazing the kind of stuff you can find at these little stations. This empty case held a United States flag presented by Senator Kent Conrad in 1990. Um, Where'd it go? 2013, it was stolen by a selfish and oh my patriotic God. individual. By this conduct, they have violated the security of our historic train station. Who would steal a flag? Question mark, question mark. Here are all the companies that helped to restore the depot here. This is like the 90s. Like we got the Dairy Queen that hopefully we're gonna hit up later. The yep. Econo Lodge, KZZJ Radio. Way down here is Amtrak. Kind of like as an afterthought. Thank you to all these people because this is beautiful looking station. Really beautiful. Someone cross-stitched a rugby train poster. Wow, thank you, Carrot Miller. Oh my gosh, I mean, the amount of love poured into this channel. I know, this everything is like... about this station in case everyone who lives here loves this piece of history. I discovered that the reason that the station is unlocked all the time, well, at least one of the reasons, is that this door is not lockable even if you wanted to. They claim to have hours, but uh, right, no. Right, there are hours, but I think it's just open. It's yeah, and staff. this is still accessible. The platform is accessible with the nice brick. I love this, the factory stuff here. Hmm, Jackson. Do you think you and I could move this like edge thing so that the spit is actually accessible? One, two, three. Oh, wait. One, two, three. One more. One more. One, One two, three. Okay. This has been gorilla accessibility on miles and transit. Look, it's accessible it's now. Accessible we now. did it. This parking, I assume, is free and you can just park whenever because who cares? This station building is. Gorgeous on the outside too. On the inside of the building, this door said no exit. Pan down, Miles. Oh, that's why. <laughs> so maybe they're working on this, but if you want to get in the building, you gotta enter from the platform. It's all accessible, so it's okay. There's a whole side of this building that's closed, and it seems to just be like packing empty things. This is Miles, and he's got some numbers to share. So in 2019, Rugby Station got 3,968 riders. That averages out to 11 a day, which is interesting because our train had five offs and one on. That's pretty much average. I heard a creepy bug flapping around. Creepy bugs. These stations are creepy bugs. All right, Jackson. All right. We're gonna do the classic. One, one two, two, three. One, nine, nine out of ten. ten. Yeah. The overall theme I'm noticing here is, for what it is, it's really well done. This is not trying to be Moynihan Train Hall or Chicago's Union Station, but for what it is, it's great. The amount of love poured into this terminal, just the amount yeah. of artifacts and, and historical images that people right. have compiled, they all say like, this was compiled by this person, it's always someone else. Like, I know, there's so many like endowed shares, like so many tales of people who have poured a lot of energy into this station. The station is right downtown, it's in a great location, yeah. it's pretty much walking distance to all of rugby, I mean, our hotel's on the edge of town for you know, about 20 minutes. They only get one train a day, but and, and that's why it wouldn't be Each a 10, yeah. I think. I always think that every long distance train on the Amtrak should have like one 12 hours apart, so that cities get yeah, trains at those times. The trains at this station stop at fairly reasonable hours. I think it's mm -hmm. uh, about 8 a.m. going west and maybe 10 p.m. going east. I'll correct exactly. that if that's wrong. But. So, yeah, relatively human times. Wow, so we actually agreed on that. Yeah, I think. Yeah, the station's 9 out of 10. We'll be exploring the town, we're gonna to see the monument for the geographical center of North America. <laughs> this is the main drag of rugby. As you can tell, it's thriving. We're here on a Sunday, so a lot of stuff is closed. It's today, yeah. <laughs> but, it, it, you know, it's a nice, you know, the downtown is right next to the railroad station. It's it's got really good bones. It's a shame we're here on a Sunday, because these businesses look cool. Like, this is this and that. It's an antique shop. Just some, I see records in there. Old Rush 79. That must have some, some bangers on it. This is really cool. This is like a craft shop with a lot of patriotism and oh, just a lot of cool stuff. This is apparently the main intersection in Rugby, North Dakota. Hey, you know, it's... It's a thing. Any of these roads have lines on them. This is quite the stop sign, right next to the beautiful post office. Gorgeous Art Nouveau post office. Here's the Pierce County Courthouse, a treasure of a building. Yeah, we're in a county seat right now. Here's a little war memorial for the residents of the town that were in various wars. The decrepit apartment building that looks like it's up for sale. Also, it's a very exciting, big apartment building. Is in Rugby, North Dakota. We're leaving downtown now. We're kind of heading into this more residential area. This town is small enough that all the high school students get these banners saying they graduated. So Cordell, congrats. If you're watching this, good luck at State, Peyton. And Hallie, and also while we're here, congrats on graduating, Hudson. And that this is Miles. 
You know, you're watching Miles in transit. We've got a water tower. Right around this bush and a new water tower dropped. We now have to cross this road. This is the most leisurely jaywalk across a five lane highway I've ever done. Walking across a five lane highway <laughs> that is like, not uncrowded enough that we're able to do that. Who would have thought the geographical center of North America would be in the <laughs> parking lot of a Mexican restaurant? I mean, uh... I'm... underwhelmed. The geographical center of North America is in the intersection of Route 2 and Route 3 in Rugby, North Dakota. Oh, gotta get a tourist picture. History! Oh gosh. It's gotten a bit warped, it's very pink. When you stand at the base of our monument, you're truly at the center of it all! Wow, what a, what a Americentric view. Wait, 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 <laughs> The structure was moved to its present location in 1971 when Highway 2 was four lines. So is this not even the actual it's center? Like the center of America is kind of in the middle of the highway. <laughs> All right. Oh well, cars always come first. We have a map here and a lot of destinations that yeah. honestly may not exist anymore. We've got the best stocked information center of the country at the northeast <laughs> corner of highways two and three. That appears to now be That's a, bank. a bank now. So Lubeck, Maine is fifteen hundred miles east. Nia Bay, Washington, eleven hundred miles west. Arctic Circle, Circle fourteen hundred fifty miles north. Uh, Polko is two thousand miles. miles that way. Somehow that equals the center, I Somehow. guess. Now we're gonna head to this cottage coffee cafe. Coffee cottage cafe. Menu shot, menu shot. Right now you're looking at the menu shot. It's got a Philly cheesesteak on here. And it's got the monument. Jackson, this is gonna hit the spot. This is Rugby's radio station, KZZ. J. And also KKWZ. And then here's where we're staying, the Northern Lights Inn. Our hotel has a pool, kind of had a pool. Is this the hotel room reveal shot? This is 206. Oh, here we go. oh do you want to open it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, this is actually really nice. Wow. Oh, two beds. A bathroom, okay. This was like 70 bucks. Miles and trends of viewers, if you find yourself in Rugby, North Dakota. <laughs> Northern Lights in. We're here in downtown Rugby. At 7.30, we're gonna see a movie at this theater, Downton Abbey. It's a one-screen theater. You'll notice that we are standing in the middle of the street because despite this being broad daylight in the main street of the town, almost nothing is open. Um, the street is almost deserted. Um, this, this pub slash tavern I see bubbles is apparently open. It does not look that way from where we're standing, but we're gonna try it, I guess, because what else can we do? The one place it's open. Down down there? Oh yeah. That was a place. It would have been nice if any other spot had been open on Sundays, but uh, most of this town is closed on Sunday. So, yeah, unfortunately. Uh, don't, don't visit rugby on Sunday. Hanging this is out. The main street of the town. And this freight train has been blocking the main street for 20 minutes. And if you'll notice, there is no traffic jam. Because that's the sort of town we're dealing with here. The door so, so we got is one open. Door open by the Lyric Theater in Rugby, North Dakota. Wow. Stand it still again. These bugs. These bugs are eating me alive, Miles. I'm sorry. But isn't that, a, isn't that a gorgeous view? It is. A th Despite it being a road! This is the Northern Lights statue. It's supposed to represent the Northern Lights. I think there's like a light show or that it does or something, but it's yeah, uh... It's not open right now. This is the Prairie Village Museum, which is not open on Sundays, but it's they uh... build all these fake prairie saloon type buildings that all have false fronts. Hey, it's us. We can just do a debut from here. Yeah, I know. Ghosts. Over the very loud sound of the air conditioning fan in this hotel room. Um... Okay, I'll, I'll stop the bit now. So we just got back from the movie theater and walking around a bit. We watched the Downton Abbey movie. It was okay, but the theater itself was beautiful. Yeah. Everyone was really nice inside. Yeah, they're um, restoring it. If you find yourself in Rugby, North Dakota, buy uh, a bucket of popcorn at the Lyric Theater. That'll help save uh, the Lyric. So we've checked our train. It's 33 minutes late right now, which is early enough. Yeah, that it's plausible that they could make that time up by tomorrow morning. Honestly, half an hour late would be perfect. That would give exactly. us a little more time. A little bit more time to eat. The place opens at 7 and our train leaves at 7.53 yeah. if it's on time, so it's cutting it a little close. So yeah. I, Staying here though, we got complimentary um, breakfast vouchers, which is really cool. Yeah. So that, that works pretty well. The Northern Lights in really a great Yeah, we're so... See you tomorrow. Yeah, see you tomorrow. Hopefully all goes well. 
So that was a very good, albeit short, night of sleep at the Northern Lights Inn. After sleeping on a train for a couple nights, you can really get used to luxury like this. And the train mm -hmm. is only about 18 minutes late, So unfortunately, like. that means we have to hustle. We're at Dakota Farms, scarfing down some French toast before our train. It was free from the hotel. We are hustling right now. Our train's about 18 minutes late, and we're about 8, like 17 minutes, minutes late. away from the station. <laughs> we think we're gonna make it, but also, it's a once a day train. So if we don't hustle right now, things could get disastrous. But on the way, that doesn't mean we don't have time to check out the scenery, like the orange and black water tower, and also these houses with unusually large garage front. <laughs> it's rush hour in Rugby, North Dakota. It is 7.59 a.m. On, on a Monday. Monday. There's a car. But in all seriousness, Rugby has treated us great, and while well, we're back. And a single headlight pokes its way over the horizon. Level crossing's coming down. Our train is in sight. It's really amazing how like, this station is empty for 98% of the day, but then when this once a day train comes along, it it's a hotbed of activity. Of transit riders and YouTubers. Well, these bugs are murderous. <laughs> Big train goes, woo! That shot was so washed out from the sun. I got a couple pictures, but that was like the least optimal supposition. <laughs> We are on the train, they sat us right next to each other. Which I'm is amazing. very yeah, happy, very just happy 13 minutes that. late. Yeah. That was actually a really good time for what it was. Great exactly. station, great yeah, town, yeah. so now we continue on. That was <laughs> Jackson. Yeah. We forgot to play rugby and rugby. Uh-oh. Was there rugby and rugby? <laughs> no, that was my stupid ending. 